Hello, my name is Julian and welcome to the show. At the same time as I bought my Garmin Fenix 7X a year ago, my wife persuaded me to upgrade her smartwatch as well. Like me, she was upgrading from a Garmin 4Runner 935 that she'd run with for about five years or so. Like me, she's an Ironman triathlete and needs the multi-sport functions of a smartwatch like the Fenix 7. Unlike me, however, she wasn't buying the Garmin marketing stuff that boasted the extensive battery life and the rugged good looks of my Fenix 7X. No, she wanted a Garmin watch, but with a display that looked like an Apple watch. So that day, I bought her a Garmin Epix Gen 2. Now on this channel a few weeks ago, I talked about my Fenix 7X and what features I was still using after a year of ownership. We had some great discussions in the comments about the watch, but one that kept coming up was how people were comparing the Fenix range to the Garmin Epix Gen 2, which was launched around the same sort of time and very similar in terms of capabilities, but with an AMOLED screen instead of the LCD screen on the Fenix. So here we are one year later. Are we both still happy with our choices? And how does the Gen 2 Epix compare to the 7X one year on? Well, let's start first with a quick look at the two watches to compare them. The appearance of them, ignoring the display for a minute. I know it's difficult, but let's let's try and do that. The style of the Epix 2 is much more understated compared to the Fenix. It's less bulky. The screws are less obvious around the bezel. In fact, the bezel itself is much, uh, much smaller overall. The bezel does seem to be more prone to scuffs than the Fenix 7X. I can't imagine that I'm any more careful than she is, so this has to be down to the difference in the material that's used between them. If you look at the top right button on the Fenix here, it's a nice shade of red. If you look at the same button here on the Epix, it's a really cool shade of green, uh, but it's also knurled and, and it rotates. So this is like a rotating crown on something like an Apple Watch. Garmin, however, has stated a number of times that this serves no purpose whatsoever in the current watch software. Although it very clearly rotates, it's very clearly knurled. So at some point in its design, I think there was something intended for it there. Flipping these over, the back of both of them is stainless steel. That's different to the Forerunner range that was typically plastic and less durable. But in this case, we see they're both pretty much the same with pretty much the same heart rate sensor here on the back as well. The Epix is slightly thinner than the, the, the Fenix. As I have said in a previous video, the weight and the bulk of the Fenix 7X have actually had a bit of an impact. I find that because of those, I need to ensure that it's pulled very tightly on my wrist when I'm working out and certainly tighter than I'd normally have it day to day because it just moves around a bit too much otherwise whilst you're running. That's not the experience we have with the Epix Gen 2. The weight feels light enough for that to not really be necessary and it's not really bulky enough either. Looking at the straps here, the size is different, but that's only because of the 7X being the larger watch. Most of the Garmin watches today are using the same straps that the regular size Fenix uses and also the Epix Gen 2. And they have the same quick release system as well, which is completely identical between them and the straps therefore are interchangeable. Now on the outside, the Fenix 7X have two features which the Epix Gen 2 does not. Firstly, the Fenix 7X has this flashlight. I just love this so much and I use it every single day. Also on the Fenix 7, including this particular 7X, there is a solar panel around the bezel and in the screen itself. Now this could be really useful, but look here. I'm at 80% battery and I have 20 days of battery life left based on normal usage. So the benefits to me as a multi-sport triathlete of a solar panel to eke out just that bit more charge from the sun isn't really a game-changing feature for me. The most important benefit I think of the solar panels on these watches, however, is it is giving Garmin an opportunity to get real-world experience from users and development expertise on using solar panels to charge small devices such as watches. So over time, this is gonna give Garmin a technological edge over other competitors because they are ahead of the curve and they can keep improving and developing this technology, which will give them the ability for the solar panels in their devices to charge the watch more quickly or more completely under normal or less and less daylight solar exposure. So, okay, with all that out of the way, let's look now at the display. And now this is the killer feature of the Epix Gen 2. Now it's pretty unique at the time of launch for a multi-sport Garmin watch, but now quite recently, the latest 4Runner 965 and the 265 multi-sport watches have got exactly the same display technology. But in this comparison, if you look at the two displays here, I have to admit, this is where the Fenix 7 just looks dull. The Fenix has 280 by 280 pixels and is rocking, get this, 64 colors. The Epix Gen 2, the display is 416 by 416, so it has a higher pixel density and it's actually a slightly smaller display than the 7X version here as well. And it can show 65,000 colors. That's right, 65,000 compared to 64. 
Now, if we look at the feature set of both of these watches, they're basically the same. Scrolling through, they're both touch screens, as you can see. They both have haptic feedback, which is a nice touch as well. Very smooth, very easy to use. Way better than touch screens that Garmin has had in previous watches, and certainly way better than what they have on their uh, their bike computers right now. You'll see here the Fenix 7X actually has an extra screen for the solar panel performance, which of course is not relevant for the, the Epix that doesn't have it. But other than that, there aren't really any noticeable differences at all in the feature set. In fact, even the design of the display for each of these activities, given that you've got so much more to work with with the Epix, is exactly the same. Now, the Fenix display is always on by default. The Epix Gen 2, as a way of preserving some of the battery life, can be set to only come on when you lift it up to look at it, or you can set it to just light up when you lift up the watch to your eyes, like this one is, is set up now. Now, if you're outside and working out, the Fenix display is super clear. And as you're working out, it's so clear and bright and impactful. You don't need it any better in my view. But for daily wear, there's no question that the AMOLED displays on this watch look way, way better than the LCD one on the Fenix. So after one year, what do I think is the right choice between these watches and, and what would I choose today? Today, I would do exactly the same as a year ago. In fact, my wife would also do exactly the same. After one year, we're both happy with the choices that we made back in February, 2022. My wife has the Epics, and while she feels it's a little bit larger than she'd like on her wrists, she likes the style, the weight, the feature set, and definitely that AMOLED display. Now she has to charge it up maybe once every five days or so, but that charging takes less than one hour. From that, she gets pretty close to a full charge, if not a complete charge. On the other hand, I'm in love with my Fenix 7X. I can take the display limitations as they don't prevent me from using this as a workout tool on a daily basis. That display is always on and the battery life is so long, I rarely even think about it. In fact, I have to remember to charge it. The charging time also for this one is about an hour or so. So I just need to remember to charge it every couple of weeks, maybe twice a month, maybe twice every full moon, maybe. The true difference between these two watches is much more about their style and appearance and potentially what those designs say about you and much less about feature set of each of these watches because they are so similar. The Fenix 7X on my wrist looks balanced, it looks rugged, and in my view, it looks great with all the data on it, kind of like a data fire hose that's always on the display. The Epix Gen 2 on my wrist just doesn't have that same impact for me. It doesn't suit me, I don't think it looks right. But again, that's just my preference and that's my style. That doesn't mean it wouldn't be right for you. My wife loves it. Plus, however, the Epix Gen 2 doesn't have that flashlight, which I need for the sake of my cat pretty much every night. Now, going forward, Garmin undoubtedly is going to have to look to integrate that AMOLED display technology into more of their watches, particularly now that they have a more credible competitor with the Apple Watch Ultra. And this is where I see Garmin may have to look at their current product strategy. In prior generations of smartwatches, the Apple Watch was not really a credible competitor. Functionality and battery life didn't really add up to the right experience for multi-sport athletes or serious runners and cyclists. With the Ultra, a lot of that changed for many people but I don't think it was enough to cause Garmin to give up the fight. Garmin remains the clear winner of the endurance or long distance athletic watch choice. Now I know that Apple's marketing machine would have you believe differently, but as I go to different events around the country, I'm yet to find a significant number of Apple watches, even the ultra on the wrists of runners for any event longer than say a 10 K. But there's no question that the Apple Watch Ultra gets much closer to bringing the serious sports watch and the smart daily wear watch into one integrated device. And with future generations, there's no doubt, Apple's gonna get closer and closer to it. So with that in mind, what does Garmin have to do in order to stay ahead? Well, firstly, I think they need to keep pushing the brand as one for serious athletes and outdoor enthusiasts by focusing on what those people are looking for. Those consumers are more interested in toughness, reasonably long battery life, say five to seven days, lots of sport integration built in and great connectivity. Now those people, and as one I can say this with quite some confidence, they're not really interested in being able to scroll through photos on their watch because their display is so nice. Now, I can do that over a coffee after my workout on my phone. But the integration of the Apple Watch Ultra with the rest of the Apple ecosystem becomes very compelling for someone like me that other than my Garmin watches, I am very integrated and entrenched into the Apple ecosystem. Increasingly, I think upgrading the displays of different Garmin watches to AMOLED display technology is probably now a necessity. That solar technology, if Garmin continues to develop it, would be a great way to extend that battery life and allow more power hungry displays and maybe other connected features to operate without leading to more frequent charging, such as with an Apple Watch. I also think, and I digress a little bit here, 
The Garmin should put their watch range on a serious diet. They have way too many models now, it's absolutely impossible to keep up. I don't believe that the approach of launching so many new and apparently different watch models that they promote today is the answer. The range is too diverse, there are too many different watches, but when you get underneath it, most of them offer pretty much the same or virtually the same features as each other. Just look at the two we talked about here today. They are potentially targeted at different markets, yet they have pretty much the same feature set. When it comes to connectivity, the Garmin Connect app on your phone or your iPad, but let's focus on your phone, has made significant strides in recent years to become way less clunky and much more integrated with Apple and likely Android as well. But it is still a bit clunky. You still know you're dealing with something that is not fully integrated within the Apple ecosystem. And it needs a bit more effort to become totally seamless for their users to make sure it doesn't become a reason to move over to an Apple Watch Ultra. I think Garmin's realized this. And if I look at the recent advances on Garmin Connect, they're making great progress. I've had the app running now on my phone for 24 seven for just over a year. I can't remember the last time it missed a connection or, or crashed for any reason. Now, despite these points and these upgrades I think Garmin could do, the loyalty that consumers have for Garmin is extremely strong. And that includes for me. In my case, as an example, it would be very hard for Apple or any other brand to pry me away from my loyalty to Garmin for their watches. When I think of multi-sports and working out, Garmin is the first brand I think of, followed by Zwift, and then Cervelo. Apple doesn't even make top 10 for me. So looking ahead, do I think we're gonna see a future generation of the Fenix watch with an AMOLED display? Yeah, I think it's very likely, and I think it's gonna be necessary. But I think that the Fenix, along with the Garmin Dive Watch, will probably be the last of the Garmin watches to switch over to this technology, as the use case for extended battery life is probably strongest with, with those ranges. That's it. Hope this is useful. Thanks for watching. If it was useful, please like and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.